Hello and welcome to the Intra Club reviews of the Giants and the Dogs. It's George from Fantasy Take TV. We'll go over the Giants first. Uh, that game was not streamed, but just have notes from the website and um, yeah, I'll just quickly touch on that. So be brief with that one. But the Dogs will go a bit more in depth, a bit more relevance, I think. And yeah, I actually got to watch this game. So love watching the Doggies play. And a lot, a few players have jumped up a bit more on my radar and a few have gone a bit more off my radar. So we'll speak about that. But yeah, uh, the practice games are done. In terms of changes that I've made to my own team, the only, the only real premium changes, I've got Young up to Jordan Dawson. And the way I did that was, as much as I love Laird, uh, I've gone down to either Steele or McRae. Not too sure. I've got another week to decide that. But and then there's a whole bunch of you know mid prices and rookies that are moving around. So that's something to worry about at the end of next week. I'm not too worried with how that looks at the moment. But we should have um, I think two weeks or so after the practice games till round one or the second round of practice games. But without further ado, we'll get into the players. So the first two players we'll touch on for the Giants, uh, Kelly and Cogs. Now, the info on the website says, I can't spell Cornelio. What they're saying on the website is they both copped a knock. One copped an ankle knock, the other copped a leg knock. Expected to play next week. So, look, Kelly, this isn't, it's just a knock, so probably be, probably, probably a little bit unlucky. But yes, a slight concern. So, just see how they go next week. I'm not considering Kelly, but Cogs has been in my team for, I don't know, one and a half months. So, Fingers crossed he's all good, but just keep an eye on that. Also worth noting that this game that they played against a few top-ups, I think. So, yeah, it was the A versus B team. They're saying Tom Green had 50 disposals, so that's a big tick and had a great preseason. So, see how he goes next week um, against a side's strong team. But yes, I think uh, he's moved his way, what's his ownership? 23, so it's gone up a lot. Um, but yeah, I've jumped on board and yeah, we'll see how it goes. Big preseason and all that and going to be the number one man in there, probably along with Cogs as the uh, in and under guy. The next player we have is Finn Callahan. Now, he had both shoulders taped up, which was interesting, but he also apparently hurt his foot, but he also played really well. Got a little bit of inside time early, but got to remember no Kelly, no Cogs. Um, so yeah, see if his foot injury or whatever, I'm not sure the exactly what, what happened there, but I did read a few things about that, that he went off at some stage. Um, but yeah, when they were saying about who was standing out in the first and second quarter, they were saying Finn Callahan and Tom Green. So he's not in my team, but he's on the radar. Um, see if he plays next week, see if he gets CBAs, but... He's probably not one I can fit in no matter what I do at this point. So he's probably a no for me. But um, he'll be interesting to watch because he's very talented. But yeah, a few injury issues there. And then the other two are Whitfield. It's just funny how these guys are all mids and half of them are going to... Well, a few of them won't even get B mids with Ash and Whitfield. So Whitfield had 34 touches and Ash... They said Ash played really, really well at halfback, providing a lot of dash. So Isaac coming, cross him off your list. Um, would you pick Whitfield in the midfield? I think the um, the risks remain with him. It's a durability issue. It's the knocks. It's the, I don't know, it seems a bit fragile in terms of dealing with injuries. So great player, but all that stuff with Whitfield is a no for me. And then Ash, maybe he can do like an, I think he did 85 at halfback a few years ago. Maybe he can do something similar, but a little bit expensive, and I think I prefer Hopper. So I'll take a few players out, I think. Let you know, leave him there. So we'll touch on the on the Bulldogs. This game was it was the A side versus this, it was pretty much even teams, but it was the A back line versus the A forward line. So they were on different teams, but they were against each other, and then the midfield was split up. So the midfield, like on, I don't think Bont or McRae ever played on the same team, that, that sort of thing. So it was a, I thought it was, the contest was good. I guess maybe slightly scrappy, you could say, but um, 
what happened was teams were able to score quickly at a stoppage. Probably a concern because that kind of happened. It's happened in the last few years. But nonetheless, we're here to talk more about Supercoach. So the first player I will discuss, and in my opinion, the best on ground, was Jack McRae. So I think it's worth noting that part of the issues with McRae is we saw him fade out of games. His fourth quarters were poor as it had ever been last year. So does that come back into this? Does that translate into this year? I'm not sure. But he was really good, really prolific. Full inside mid. I'm not sure if he started at half forward. I think maybe once or twice. Not exactly sure, but he did rotate off halfback quickly and just pushed up into stoppage because Daniel started there and then Daniel moved into the midfield, which we'll get we'll touch on after. I'm not really worried about that. So he was the main man in there. Um, but yeah, big tick. He looked really, really good, really good, and the role was really good. And I think what made this pick more interesting and what put him back on my radar was first of all. We'll get to Toby McLean after, but McLean barely got any mid-time. Played a little bit deeper forward, probably more half forward, and then also in the fourth quarter, a lot of wing time. Although he did play a little bit of wing earlier as well. Earlier as well. So I'm not sure, given they were running six midfielders because it's two teams and McLean barely got any time, um, maybe that's one less problem for McRae, but we'll see the numbers next week. And also Daniel... Played in the midfield, and I don't see any point playing him there. I think the experiment will fail, just because they have better players in there. I think he pressures well, he tackles well, but he doesn't really doesn't really burst from stoppages. Didn't really see him win many clearances. I guess tough competition against the dogs mids. Yeah, I don't know what the you know small as well doesn't help. I, I don't see the point, and I think that experiment will fail. So what does that mean for him? I think they probably should have traded him, to be honest, because they don't have a spot for him. They don't need him down back anymore. Um, I don't think he's required in the midfield, so what do they do with him? I'm not sure. But yeah, he does bring some things to the table. So I think that will help McRae, um, because I don't think that will work, but no guaranteed. And then their wings. So they rotated so many players on the wing. Um, I've done an update on my Twitter at FTTV on, on um, a detailed thing on this game like quarter by quarter of what I saw every quarter and I think the players were Scott um, Karma's got a quick rotation on there Bailey Williams and there were two others I think McComb got a bit of time on there there's one more player that I'm missing Oscar Baker who was pretty quiet so they tried a lot of things on the wing they tried a few things in the midfield which I'm not quite sure which worked so for me it's almost like you never know what Bevo is going to do, but it's it's no brainer to me to give him another seventy percent CBAs, especially with Dunkley out to the side. But we never know because it's beverage. But that was encouraging. The things around him probably worked in his favour, in my opinion, and his performance was outstanding. He was my best on ground. So McRae is a tick, but we'll see what happens when they have a you know their proper A side next week because it was a side it wasn't it was balanced midfield so tick for McRae the next one is Bont I don't think you can take much out of this so all you wanted wanted to see was him look good move well that's pretty much it so had a few touches good inside good outside classic contested markup forward as well nothing to discuss on Bont tick the next player we have okay just quickly touch on Trelaw so he's not relevant but we remember last year, Trelaw played a bit more half-back. I think that experiment is done. He was playing midfield. A little bit rusty, but has he has been underdone, or is underdone. So I guess that's another name to go in that midfield. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of expecting mid-half forward for Trelaw. So that is a bit annoying. It's another name to go in that midfield, I guess. But again, next week, I think we'll get a better idea of what the balance should look like. And then the other one is Bailey Smith. So Bailey Smith, I think he was just in, didn't get out of second gear. Typed in Baz there. I wouldn't go to Bailey Smith. It's an interesting one for fantasy because his kicking isn't the best. But yeah, I'm not too sure. Yeah, I don't think he's relevant. I don't think he did, he did anything to say that, you know, he's going to be mid-relevant this year. Just with all the names they got there and all, what else we have available. But yeah, he was just it was just a practice game for him, so I wouldn't really worry about that performance. Um, but he was he was okay, just nothing special. 
we'll finally get to someone that's not in the midfield, and that is Tim English. So on their website, they said like English was really good, had some really good taps advantage, um, which is true, but I don't think he was that great. And Sweet, I reckon, got him in the first half. It was pretty even, I think, but maybe Sweet just. And his around-the-groundwork improved in the second half. Copped a small head knock, not his fault or anything, just took a mark and somebody clipped him after the mark. Just not his fault at all. Went down, but seemed fine. But always got to watch, watch for that delayed concu- uh, concussion that happened last year. So keep an eye out for that. But I think he should be fine. He looked fine and played out the game. Um, yeah, for me, two soft tissue injuries. I couldn't care less what he does. He's a uh, cross for me. Don't care one bit. So look... You probably saw what you needed to see if you were keen on English. Um, probably you would have liked to see a little bit more, but it's a no for me for as I, reasons I stated before. Um, I think we'll touch on Oscar Baker. Pretty cool. Oh, I can't spell Oscar. It's O S K. Yep. Oscar Baker. Um, Pretty average, lots of competition for the wing spots and none of them really look like taking the ball by the horns. I don't know if he plays round one. Um, Yeah, no idea. I'd say probably more unlikely than likely based on this performance, but give him another go. Uh, So we'll keep an eye out for that. Now, defense. Actually, we'll get to Toby McLean. I think think you still got to pick him at the price. He's had a really good preseason. But he was pretty quiet and he was just used to plug holes everywhere. Played three different position, positions. So, yeah, at his price, who cares? I think you still pick him. Because he's versatile, I, I don't know. Could he be sub? Maybe there's a few others beneath him that could be sub. But, yeah, he's had a really good preseason. And, you know, it wasn't his best day or most prolific day. But did have to play a few different roles. I think he did kick a nice goal, though. So, See how he goes over the next over next week, but yeah, he's one I'm still happy to field and not jumping off. Yeah, just too cheap and too highly owned. Now the defense. So Dale. Dale was okay. I think the concern is so Daniel has moved out of the defense. And I think part of the issue is do they put Daniel back in defense? Because yeah, I don't see the midfield role holding. Um, I'm not too sure, but what's happened is Dale's gone out and Hayden Crozier has come in and taken kick-ins. So the defense was, it was the A-side defense, and the seven defenders were Dale, Richards, Crozier, Keith, um, Jones, Gardiner, and somebody else. I can't remember, but there were seven names. Hang on. Dale... Richards, Crozier, Jones, Gardner, Keith. I, I don't know, I'm missing somebody. I think I mentioned it, but anyway. Um, there's, there's seven defenders there, and that means Crozier took some kick-ins as well. It's, that's annoying me that I can't remember that the next name, but um, nonetheless, yeah, Crozier took kick-ins. He played okay, I think, and I think the coaches said before that they're going to give him a crack or something like that. They spoke about him in the defense, um, playing in that defense um, before the game. So he's an interesting one. 218K on kick-ins. I think he's done 80 plus, 85 plus in the past over stretches, but we'll have Dale and Richards there. So, um, oh, Dre. Dre is the one I forgot um, as the lockdown option. So yeah, he played as well. So that's the seven. So I think this is bad for Dale. I think this is bad for Richards. Um, Because he did get a bit of ball back there. Yeah, and also Ed Richards looked really good. Took, I think, only the one kick in. The rest went to Crozier and Dale. Um, Look, I like Richards. I think he's a very good player. And if you had to ask me which defender will finish highest in the best and fairest, I would say Ed Richards. You know, he was got a fair bit of the ball, was rebounding well. And he, he's a really good defender as well in terms of like not just using it, but actual defending. But now we can see that there's another player taking kick-ins and yeah, there's just multiple options. So I think he's somewhere going to, I think he will go somewhere in the 90s. I think he'll have a great year. 
I don't think he'll score enough in this setup. I think he needs to be given the keys and the main man, or at least equal main man to go 100 plus um, with Dale. And even that will be pretty hard with two people down there to go 100 plus. I think we only saw like West Coast with Hearn and Witherden, and then Sard and Doherty. So yeah, it's pretty hard to have two names go 100 plus back there. But yeah, with Crozier playing there and taking kick-ins, I don't think Richards will get enough kick-ins. So that's a little bit disappointing. So he's a cross for me, but I do love watching him play. Star player. And that's it for everyone. I guess Liam Jones, people might be looking at him. I thought he was good. Defensively, pretty sound. Looks really, tr really trim as well. Looks in good shape. So I just think that I can't pay this sort of price for a key defender. Like he need, he needs to be about like 170k, 180k. I think 230 is a bit too much. Yeah, and he's going to score 30 some weeks, so I think I'll stay out of that one. And there's one more we might get as a rookie. Arthur Jones. So he was pretty good. Heard his name bop up. Um but yeah, just keep an eye on him as a rookie. I think there's probably better options. I think my preferred would be Green and Chandler at the moment as your F7, F8. But yeah, just want to keep an eye on for next game. So that is my review. Voice, it's early morning, so my voice is a little bit hasty this morning. Um, but that's all from me. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you guys soon.